God is in this place. I mean, listen, um, I've got something on my heart that uh, as your pastor, as your leader, I, I, need, to, I need to release it. <laughs> uh, and so I'm going to preach on something today that's probably, um, probably not going to sit good with a lot of people. That's okay, because I'm standing on the Bible. And, uh, but this word needs to be heard by, by Christians, by Christians. So I'm, if you're a man or woman of God, uh, I, I need you to lean in, I need you to listen, because I want to release this into the atmosphere. I want to make some things public today. We're living in a time, and y'all know if, you, if, you, if you're alive, and you've got ears, and you can see or hear, you know we're living in a time that people are downplaying the name of Jesus Christ. They are downplaying the name of Jesus Christ. They're downplaying his gifts. They're, down, they're downplaying his, his name. They're downplaying you. They're downplaying me. They're downplaying his church. That we're living in mocking times. And I see a she-bear coming. And if you don't know what a she-bear is, people were making fun of Elisha because he was a man of God. He was preaching the truth. He was doing something everybody else knew they should be doing, but he was bold enough to stand up and say, thus saith the Lord. They were making fun of the church. They were making fun of the man of God. They were making fun of the gifts. They were making fun of everything. And God says, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. He got two she-bears. And he, he, they, he sent them out and they mauled them. They killed them. You say, Brian, you believe it? I believe everything in this Bible. This is not a time to be in a mocking time or making fun of time or disbelieving times. Church, I want to make this public today. Jesus Christ can still save you. And I know I'm in a good house this morning, but this has got to be heard through Facebook, through our website, because there's people out there that think you're too bad, you're too far gone, but God is stepping in here today and saying, if you're breathing, I can still save you. I can save you right where you're at. You're not too far gone. Somebody help me. Jesus Christ still forgives people. Listen to me. Listen to me. We all are stinking mess in here today. And I am begging Christians to stop judging. And start loving. And blessing. And helping. And reaching down into the ditch. And getting them back out of the ditch. God can still forgive you. No matter what you did last night. I know you, you watched the movie. I know what you did last summer. I know what you did last night. Jesus still heals. I feel like I, I hope I'm at the right church today. He can still heal your rear end. He can still deliver you. I don't care if you got 6,000 demons in you today. I serve a God that lay hands on you and cast every one of them out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Don't tell me he can't do it. Don't, don't you tell me he can't do it. He can deliver you from alcohol, drugs, pornography, lying, cheating, cussing, stealing. Here's, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm preaching on. The title of this sermon, don't, don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't, don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Because, listen, we're going to set the record straight today. I, I feel a boldness. I, I feel a king <laughs> Elijah up in me today. I know the government, and I, I know some people don't, don't deem the church essential. But we believe, as, as Elkhorn Baptist Church, and as a man of God, and as a congregation, that God is essential. That Jesus Christ is essential. Y'all better lean in. That the Holy Ghost is essential. Somebody help me. That this church is essential. And whatever, here's what I found out in my personal life. Watch. Whatever is essential to you, you'll love that. You'll fight for that. And that's why I'm fighting for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, today. He's worth going to jail for. He's worth going to the lion's den for I feel the Holy Ghost. He's worth getting thrown into a fire and not getting burnt. 
He's worth standing up in a pulpit and making it public to thousands of people today. Don't you tell me that he can't do it. I need somebody to give him praise. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't heal you. So Friday, Friday morning at, at 10, 12, I write, I'm a note taker, and, and I believe that God's got a voice. The problem is the church has dropped their ears. He still speaks. He's speaking right now. He's alive, and he's here right now. But at 10, 12, Friday morning, uh, thus saith the Lord, come across my heart and across my spirit, and I'm going to drop it. Y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. You can throw it away. You can throw, throw, throw your notes away. You don't have to believe this. I'm to a point I'm at a good spot in my life. Here's what God said at 10, 12, Friday morning. A wave of God's glory is coming to his people. Y'all, a wave of God. Thus, uh, thus saith the Lord, I stand. Uh, thus saith the Lord. There is a wave of God's glory that is coming to his people. There is a wave that is coming to God's people. I'm going to say this till y'all receive it or reject it or get up and leave. Oh, there is a way. There is a new wind. There is a new fire. There is a new beginning. There's something coming. There's a new wave coming to you. I need y'all to receive this this morning. He ain't playing patty cake with you no more. Mm -mm. So, so let's get to the word. Let's get to the word. What does God say? I, I can't wait to preach this to y'all. Are y'all y'all glad you're here at church? I'm glad you're here. I'm tired of preaching to <laughs> empty churches. I'm tired of preaching to, to a camera. You're essential. And you're here on purpose. Job chapter 42, verse 2. Woo! Job chapter 42, verse 2. New Living Translation, here's what, here's what Job said. Job lost everything he had, his children, his home, his livestock, everything that he had. I don't understand this joker. In one day, everything. Y'all think about this. What if your house were to burn? What if you lose 10 children? Yeah, what if your wife looks at you and says, man, you're an idiot? <laughs> And you're crazy. Curse God and die. What if your friends walk out on you? Job said this, and I, I proclaim and declare in Job 42, verse 2. I know that you, God, can do anything. And no one, no man, no government, no society, no church, no pastor, no I feel the Holy Ghost. Nobody can stop you. I'm going to give him praise today. Nobody can stop God. Nobody can stop God. Everybody say that nobody can stop God. Nobody can stop God. Nobody can stop. I feel the Holy Ghost behind you. Nobody. I know you're going through some junk, sir. But I'm telling you, you've got a God inside of you that nobody can stop. I know COVID is on the rampage. But God is bigger than COVID. And I'm going to declare it. I get a lot of hell throughout the week about this COVID stuff. And listen to me very carefully. As long as I'm in the saddle, as long as I'm here, we're going to leave the doors open. We're not closing the doors. Welcome to church. You can sit back there. You can go out there. You can wear your mask. I want that. I want that. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Listen to me. And just because somebody wears a mask don't mean they have less faith. Y'all didn't hear a word I'm saying. I got to teach y'all. I got to be a proclaimer this morning. What God is doing in this house. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I just want you to be here. Because there's something supernatural going on at this church. There's some good things going on here at this place. There's some good things. So let me give you one more verse, and I'm going to preach. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Me and, me and Dana lost our first child. And uh, I, I, I went back and forth. Should I share this or not? But I am. 
we lost our first child, and, and I, I was mad at the Lord. I was upset at God. I didn't understand. I was a pastor. I'd be a good father. And there was a young youth by the name of Chris Wilson. He demanded his mother. He said, Mom, I've got to go to b house. I've got to go to Brian's house. Chris went and bought me a, a, a picture. This verse was at the bottom of this picture. And he, to the day, he still don't understand what this one word, this one verse did for me at that moment in my life. Because see, all it takes is one word from God to change you, sir. All it takes is one song. All it takes is one word from God. No matter where you're at, God can change your circumstance right here, right now. He's good. He's God. That's why he's God. In Luke 137, listen to what it says. Now, I, I proclaim this over here. Listen to me. We need a church to look at people and say, don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't heal you. Don't you dare tell me he can't set you free. Don't you dare tell me you may walk in with alcohol in your breath. He'll clean you up, stand you up, pray you up. Don't you tell me. I'm, I'm going to go against the odds today. Luke 137, for nothing, no thing, nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing. You, you, sir, you fill in the blank. And God's going to stamp it with his name. So watch this. How many of you believe that, that there's nothing impossible with God? How many, how many of y'all really believe that? There's nothing, nothing. So I want you to look at your neighbor. We, we're going to do this. I want you to say, don't you tell me he can't do it. Tell somebody else, don't you tell me. Yeah, tell them it's the last time. Y'all ready? God's getting ready to change your circumstance. Come on, God, God's getting ready to change your circumstance. God's, hallelujah, God is getting ready to change your circumstance. Don't you dare tell me God can't do it. God can do anything. If God can split a Red Sea, he can do it again. If God can put super glue on a lion's mouth, he can do it again. If God can put you in a fire and they can turn up the heat seven times and you can come out smelling like a rose, don't you tell me he can't do it again. I preach myself happy today. So here's what, here's what, here's what God spoke to me. Here's what God spoke to me. Your power is not where you are. God help me, Holy Ghost. Your power is not where you are. Your power is where you have been. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is so good. Circumstances come and go. But one thing I can do, I can look back. Everybody say, I can look back. And I can give a testimony today of the goodness of God. So it's not where we're at right now. Go help me. The reason why we should be the biggest childers in the world is where God's brought us from. Hey, yeah, I remember my mama working two jobs, busted, broke, and disgusted. But I remember also all the bills were paid, food was on the table, and clothes were on our back. Don't you tell me God can't do it. Yeah, don't you tell me God can't do it. So it's where you have been. Somebody ought to be able to look at your life and say, man, listen, talk to me about Jesus. And you shouldn't have to say, let me go get the preacher. You should be a walking testimony of what God has done, what he's doing, and where he's going to take you to. It's a, it's a dangerous question. Be ref, what's God doing in your life? I, I, got, I got points. I can tell you, watch this. Anything that's in you eventually is going to come through you. If he's in you like we say he is, the Bible says he will bring up their days of remembrance. How many of y'all can testify today? You probably shouldn't be sitting here. You, you used to have 50 cents in your pocket. Now you got a little money in your pocket. Don't y'all forget. I'm, I'm going to give him praise today. Don't you forget who gave it to you. Don't y'all forget what God's done for Elkhorn Baptist Church. Don't y'all forget where God's, he's healed you, he's delivered you. You're here today, you're thinking today. You got clothes on your back. You got my, I wish somebody helped me praise him today. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Yeah, we are. We should look. We should look back. We should look back. And so I, I wrote in my my personal notes. <clears throat> there's some people 
I had a, I had a person two weeks ago that said, I just really don't believe in that healing. <laughs> and I looked at him, I said, well, you haven't been sick enough. <laughs> so true. Sometimes I think God will get you flat on your back while all you have is looking up. God, if you don't get me up, I ain't going to get up. God, if you don't touch me, nobody else can. God, I know you got doctors and physicians, but God, I believe in the great physician. Lord, I, I believe your word. God, I receive your word. God, I know your word. And God, I'm going to walk out your word. Y'all hear what I'm saying today? Y'all hear me? I just put a Snoop Dogg dog on y'all. Y'all hear me? <laughs> it's all right. So at this point in my life, Bobby, I can't imagine when I get to Dr. James Jones's age, 80-some years of age, no wonder the man is standing, he could preach his wife's funeral. No wonder. There comes a time in your life you got to believe what you preach. You got to walk this stuff out. The world watch, the world's watching. They're watching. So I, I don't care if 450 prophets of Baal stand up today and say, where's your God? I don't care if the church votes no. I don't care if society says, well, God can't do it. I say God can. I, I say he can. And I agree with Job today. I, I know God can do anything, and nobody can stop him. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can't stop him. Come on, you can't stop him. Tell somebody they ain't listening. Tell, yeah, yeah, you can't stop him. You can't stop him. You can't. See, I think the world wants the churches to be average. Long as we don't get challenged in our faith, we're good, Greg. But if you're at a church today, I pray that you walk out saying, man, God's, God put a burr under my saddle today. I want to stir you up today. And here's what I, the secret. Everybody said, Brian, what, I had, had a girl said, what's your secret? I'm going to give y'all a, a secret ingredient today. And this is a true ingredient. This is how I get through life. Yeah. This is how when nobody else wants to give him praise, I can stand up and say, God, as for me and my house, we're going to praise you today. Y'all ready for this secret? Because it's good, but you got to apply it. See, the truth, the Bible says the truth will set you free. But the only way the truth will set you free is if you apply the truth. Y'all know truth. Y'all know he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Y'all really believe deep down in your heart that he's coming back. But what if I said prove it? Prove it. Prove it, church. Prove it that you really believe the Bible. Prove it that you, that you really believe you're saved. Prove it. That makes the difference. That makes the difference. So here's what I've learned. And put this on the big screen, because this is going to stay in y'all's heart all day today. Thinking God is cranking the engine of faith. See, I can outshout the devil. I can outshout the enemies. Watch this. I can even outshout my haters. Because here's one thing I have learned over 25 years of pastoring. You better know how to thank him. Though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, can you outshout the devil? I've learned over the years that I, I, can, I can turn my thinking on. And I can start thanking God. And what that does, the more I start thanking him, my faith starts cranking. Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost. Start cranking it up. And I know some of you say, well, that's just Pentecostal. No, that's just a thank praise. That's just me knowing where God's brought me from. See, the greatest people who can shout the loudest is know where God's brought you from. Yeah. That's why Willie Bland shouts so loud. That's why Jeff Muncy, is, he's a love machine, man. He knows where God's brought him from. You look at people who's been down in the valley of shadow of death, and they were flat on their back, and they start thanking God, thanking God, and thanking God. All of a sudden, that faith inside of them gets cranking. I feel a crank praise coming on. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think we should just, no matter how you feel, Watch, I'll show you something. No matter how you feel, where you've been, what's going on in your life, give God praise and watch this. The more you praise him, the less you think about your problem. Five. Come on, let's thank him. Come on. If he's been good to you, if you're alive and you're, you're alive today, 
Come on, thank His name. Hallelujah. Give Him praise in this house. Let's crank it up today in Jesus' name. Come on, four. Come on. No, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. God, we praise you in this house, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Three, come on. Come on. Come on. Get on it, Terry. Come on, get on it. We ain't going to shut up. Nope, 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 nope. God, we thank you. Yeah. God, we thank you, Lord. Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. Woo. I've learned. See, some of y'all, that's just a noise. But it's a different noise to Gabriel. That's a different That's a different noise to the church. You can be seated. If you can, if you don't, don't worry about it. See, that, that, that shouldn't be a horn. That's a shofar. That is the horn that Gabriel's going to blow before he comes and gets to church. Y'all, look, look at me. Y'all should recognize that. That shouldn't be a foreign horn. Why well, the preach right there? Write that down, Dana. That shouldn't be a foreign horn. <laughs> yeah, it's good. That's how God speaks to me. I know y'all look at me like, God, that boy, that boy, good God. I'm just telling y'all, I've learned, I've learned over the years that if I can't thank him, the devil has me right where he wants me. But I've learned also over the years, if I start thanking him, that starts cranking my faith. Starts cranking my faith. Starts cranking my faith. Starts cranking my faith. Next thing you know, I can touch things that were dead. They, they come back to life. I can speak life over people. Because listen, it is impossible. Hebrews eleven six. 6. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hebrews eleven six. 6. It is impossible to please God without faith. You can come to church all your life. We got a lot of church tenders. I'm asking, when's the last time you split a Red Sea? When's the last time you activated your faith? When's the last time you could thank God in the middle of a storm? Jesus. You start thanking God, what you're doing, <laughs> you start, you're cranking. <laughs> you're cranking. You're cranking. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I'm almost finished. Deuteronomy 8, 3. Watch what, watch what the Bible says. ESV. But man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. I don't live by your word. As much as I love Dana, I don't live by Dana's word. I live, watch, by every word that comes out of God's mouth. Y'all know what comes out of God's mouth? You're holding it in your hand. It's his Bible. It's his holy word. If you don't read your Bible, <laughs> you're probably not healthy. I wrote this in my personal note. God is the word. Everybody say that. God is the word. The rest of you say, God is the word. Watch this. He speaks the word. And we live by the word. God is the word. John 1.1. 1, 1. He speaks the word. And we live by the word. So, let me wrap this up. So, how do you win in life? Because all my life, I've been to church. And they'll, they'll, they'll say, how in the world do you do that, Brian? How do you live by it? So, I'm going to give you some nuggets today. How do you win in life? How do you win in marriage? How do you win at work? How do you win with your family? Here it is. You never quit or you never give up. Listen to me. I can't, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. Y'all are my family. How many times I wanted to quit ministry? Are y'all okay? It gets hard my, my, my worst critics are religious people. Lost people love me. Saved people hate me. Well, here we want. Saved people love me too. Religious people hate me. But listen to me. How come I'm still standing here today? I did not give up. I did not quit. There's been times in my heart I wanted to quit. And listen to me, I'm going to be honest, I'm not doing a Debbie Downer, but this is truth. Church, listen to me, it's going to get worse before it gets better. 
Do y'all, y'all please lean in. It's going to get worse before it gets better. You better know who you put your faith in. You better know where you stand with Jesus Christ. Because the world hates us. The world don't want us to be here today. The government will try to shut us down. Do y'all hear me? So how do you win in life? How am I still standing here today? How am I still married to Dana Michelle Rafferty? We don't quit. And we never give up. Y'all hear me? Ecclesiastes 3 talks about 28 different seasons. Listen to me. 28 different seasons. 28 different seasons. Example, there's a time to live. Everybody know. There's a time to live and there's a time to die. There's a time to heal. There's a time to plant. There's a time to weep. There's a time to laugh. The Bible even says there's a time to dance. Now chew on that one. Well, I don't know why they dance. The Bible, the Bible says so. The Bible says so. It blows my mind, Richie. We'll go to a stinking ball game. And people will be a fool. I'm talking a fool. I've seen them. I've seen some. Man. We, we scream at people wearing spandex running across the football field. A little ball bouncing on the court. We go crazy about it. Let them shut down the University of Kentucky. You mean to tell me we can't celebrate that I serve a God? Hallelujah. That he's not dead. He's alive. He saved my nasty rear end. He has forgiven me of all my sins. He has redeemed me. I'm not going to hell. And you tell me to be quiet? Have you lost your mind? Hey, Jesus. That's right. I'm to the point. I don't care if 450 prophets of Baal get up. God has redeemed all of us. God has saved all of us. He took alcohol away from you. He took drugs away from you. Now, just, just, Pastor, I don't mind you talking about it. Just, shh. This is not a shh church. Why? Well, I, 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 I thought it said El, Elkhorn ba- Baptist. <laughs> oh, there should be something. There should be a sign at the bottom. This sign is misleading you. Somebody give God praise. Come on. He's been too good to me to be quiet. He saved my soul. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray Steve and come. Uh, listen, I, 28 seasons. Watch. Pray, watch. I, who I just love y'all. I love preaching here. Listen, I love you too. Listen, it's okay. Listen, there's 28 C's in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But Bobby, there, I feel like I'm going to run. <laughs> but there was never a season to quit. Never a season to give up. There's never a season to say, I'm done. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Because I want you to hear me today. Sir, don't give up. There's hope for your children. Mama, don't you give up. There's hope. I know COVID right now is going crazy. The second wave, second wave. And I think that's what God just spoke to me. He said, I got the true wave. This latter rain, the glory of God, and y'all can say, that's his prophecy. Yep. But I'm telling you what the Bible already says. Because prophecy will back up the Bible. This second wave that's coming, you're going to find out where the remnant's at. You're going to find out where the real church is at. You're going to find out where the real Christians really truly stand. Now, I ain't talking about church attendance. I'm talking about standing up for, the, for, the, for Jesus Christ. I'm talking, don't be mean about it. Don't be, don't be fussing. Don't be cussing. We don't do that. 
But listen to me. Yes, COVID's up going crazy. Yes, the government's trying to shut us down. Yes, to all the above. But don't you tell me that God can't do it. God is on the move. Now, I'm going to give him praise today. God is on the move. God has not forgotten about you, sir. God has not forgotten about you, Brian Rafferty. God has not forgotten about you, Bobby Walker. God has not forgotten about you, Matthew. God has not forgotten about us. And I'm going to give him praise today. You can take it to the bank. His glory's coming. I wrote my notes. Hey, Brian. <laughs> I talked to myself. No man, no weapon, no government, no nothing can stop God. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Y'all can believe whatever y'all want. Because I'm telling y'all there's a lot of rain coming. And I'm telling you, here's who God's going to put his hand on. Y'all ready? A church that's standing on the Bible. A church that's not politically correct. A church that's standing on the word. Why did he choose a 14-year-old little girl to get pregnant? A lot of churches will vote her out. She is 14 to 15 years of age. Go check me out. It's all right. And see, here's the deal. I'm learning this over, over my journey. There's purpose for everything. Used to, that would mess me up. I'm like, Greg, what, the, what was that dang noise? It was God's exclamation points. It was God's explanation points. I told y'all I had a purpose for that. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Y'all chill out. It's all right, man. Don't you tell me God can't do it. Don't y'all tell me that God can't heal you. You're at the right place today. Some of you are walking around in fear. Lee, please. God did not give you fear. He gave you love, power, and a sound mind. That's God. You don't have to be fearful. Now, I wrote this in my notes too. You tell the people to get excited because they're not going down. They're going up. You're not going down. We're upward Christians, amen? We're going up. We're going home someday. And I can't wait to celebrate with y'all. Listen to me. It's closer than what y'all think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God owes us nothing else. Israel is the embassy. It's, it's there. They became a nation in 1948. It's there. We sow seed into Israel. Which some of y'all don't even realize. We just sent Israel over a $2,000 check. You know why? Because their middle school was getting bombed. And middle school student died. I texted the finance team. I said, we need to send some money over. And they just didn't send a, a dollar or two dollars. They sent over $2,000 to Israel. Why? Because we believe in Israel. We believe what God is doing over there. And God's going to bless us. Greg, you know, my, you know my biggest concern? Here's my biggest concern. That some of you are not getting this. You're not getting this. You don't realize what God is doing at this church. Right now, George, how many we got ready to be baptized? Eight? Amen. Eight? Don't y'all tell me God can't do it. Sunday morning, three people got saved got born again. Turn their life around. Don't you tell me God can't do it. Don't y'all tell me God can't do it. I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't you tell me God can't do it. Don't you dare tell me God can't change your life. Whew. You know how I know I'm preaching truth? I see the evidence in front of me. I see, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's not time to quit. If there was ever a time for the church's doors to stay open, it is now. God send the rain. 
God, send the wave. God, send your glory. God, save people. Bring the backslider home, God. Bring the prodigals home, Lord Jesus. God, touch us in a mighty supernatural way, God. We are the church. We're alive. We believe in you, Jesus. Oh, God, come. Don't lose your hope. Don't lose your joy. Y'all got me? See, I got you. Don't lose your faith. It's not time to quit. It's not time to stop. It's not time to give up because Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back. Everybody stand if you can. I'm going to read this over y'all. Listen, Drew, I thought about this man. He's so good. See, a lot of y'all think you're just going to heaven and you're going to sit on a cloud and you're going to see Moses come by. There goes Uncle Moses. A lot of y'all, you're just here going, Boy, I hope I make it. I'm going to give you two little verses that made me shout Friday. I'm going to read this over y'all. And I want y'all to think about how powerful these verses are. It's in the book of Revelation. This is before Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, the church is raptured out. Come to Bible study. We're getting ready to talk about this. It's so good. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. To him who overcomes. To him who don't stop. To him who don't give up. To him who stands on my word. To the church, watch. I will grant. This is crazy, Perry. I will grant them to sit with me, Jesus, on my throne. So I want y'all to picture this, Jackson. Picture this, man. Can y'all imagine Jesus Christ saying, Joy, come here, son. Master, come here, son. Melinda, come here, daughter. (laughs) I will grant them to sit with me, Jesus, on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne, He ends with this. Elkhorn, those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Y'all better listen. Don't you tell me He can't do it. Don't you tell me He can't save you. Don't you tell me He can't heal you. Don't you tell me He can't deliver you. Don't you tell me he can't take that, that old cursing spirit out of you. Don't you dare tell me you've gone too far. Don't you dare tell me he can't because you've got a pastor in front of you that with Christ, I, we, all of us can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. Uh, hallelujah! If you want this Jesus, I don't know where y'all are at, but don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. How do you get it? You crank your faith. How do you crank your faith? You start thanking Him. Thanking Him. God, thank you that I'm healed. God, thank you that I'm delivered. God, thank you that my family's alive. God, thank you that we're here as a church, as the body of Christ. God, thank you that my children's okay. God, I thank you that my marriage is more than good. God, I thank you. I know everybody else may not look like it, but I'm God, I'm going to thank you today. I'm going to crank it up until it comes down in Jesus Christ's name. Father God, I preach the word. Have your way in this house. Bless these precious people. God, someday we're going to sit on the throne with you. That gets me excited. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, save somebody here today. Lord, deliver somebody here today. God, put a marriage back together here today. God, I know you can do it. And Job says it best. And no thing, nobody can stop you. Have your way in Jesus' name. And all God's beautiful people say it. This altar's open. I double dog dare you to come to this altar. Let God love on you. Give God back your heart. Amen. Don't y'all tell me God can't change you. Don't tell me God can't put you back together. Don't tell me. In Jesus' name, this altar's open.